The 61C launch countdown is on schedule and proceeding smoothly toward a launch today at 6.55 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Launch window for today extends until 9.33 a.m. And there is a COLA within that launch period, and that opens at 8.11 and extends until 8.13 a.m. Eastern Time. This will be the first launch for the Orbiter Columbia since STS-9, launched November of 1983. The countdown clock is at T-minus three hours and holding, and we are about 35 minutes away from resumption of the countdown. 61C astronaut crew members have been awake for about 45 minutes, and they will soon be sitting down for a bite to eat before receiving a final weather briefing and preparing to depart for launch pad at about five minutes after four. Robert Gibson is the commander for this mission, and he will be making his second trip into space today. Charles Bolden is the pilot who will be making his first trip into space. Mission Specialist George Pinky Nelson, Stephen Hawley will be making their second trip into space, and Franklin Chang Diaz will be making his first shuttle flight along with RCA Payload Specialist Robert Sinker and U.S. Representative Bill Nelson. Several significant countdown events have taken place over the past several hours, just prior to entering the two-hour built-in hold at about 1.35 a.m. this morning, the launch team completed loading the external tank with approximately a half million gallons of super-cold propellant. The external tank operation is now in a replenish mode, which means that liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen are being added to the tank as those propellants boil off. This maintains a full propellant level in the tank for the remainder of the countdown. About the time we entered the hole, the Lockheed test director gave permission for two special teams to enter the launch pad area to complete final preparations for today's launch. The ice debris inspection team completed their survey of launch pad 39A as they traveled up the fixed service structure to inspect critical areas of the external tank and orbiter for ice and frost formation and making final checks for loose equipment and debris in the launch area. Led by NASA's Charlie Stevenson, the team will report its findings to the firing room after finishing their inspection, and that inspection has been completed, and the ICE team is now back in the launch control center. And this is being clearly, closely monitored by shuttle managers. The transatlantic abort site. And here is the flight crew. It's morning of their breakfast. And there's Mission Specialist George Pinky Nelson, Payload Specialist Robert Sinker, and Charlie Bolden. Sinker apparently mopping up some water there on the table. And Commander Robert Gibson. And Mission Specialist Stephen Hawley. and Mission Specialist Franklin Chang-Diaz, and Payload Specialist Bill Nelson. This is the crew's fourth breakfast for Mission 61C. After the breakfast, they will have a weather briefing and don flight equipment and clothing and departure for the pad in just about one hour from now. And the test conductor has taken a poll of all the systems engineers to make sure they have all switched over to the proper channel. Columbia will be launched into a 201-mile circular orbit inclined 28.5 degrees to the equator for its five-day mission. During the mission, the crew will deploy RCA SATCOM K-1 communication satellite, the second in a series of three, with its PAM V-2 upper stage. SATCOM K-2 was deployed on Flight 61B in November 1985. Also aboard Columbia in the payload bay are the Material Science Laboratory 2, the first hitchhiker payload, the RCA infrared imaging experiment, and 13 getaway special experiments in specialized canisters. Hour, T-minus one hour and 20 
T minus 61 minutes, which is one hour and 20 minutes before the actual liftoff. The alignment is completed during the T minus 20 minute hold. And after completion of the alignment, you have about 10 minutes before the transition to the OPS 101 terminal countdown launch configuration. Then there's about one hour and 30 minutes from that point before the inertial measurement units have to be realigned. So in order to maximize the last part of the launch window today, the shuttle managers have decided to go for a 7.33 T0 time. There are crew quarters, explorations, and checkout building. There is mission specialist, I mean payload specialist Bill Nelson. All getting into the elevator on the third floor. And the 61C crew members once again will be boarding the astronaut van and we'll be departing for launch pad 39A to board the Orbiter Columbia for today's planned liftoff. And then there is Commander Robert Gibson, payload specialist Robert Sinker, mission specialist Franklin Chang Diaz and Bill Nelson, and uh, JSC's George Abbey. And all boarding the astronaut van. Be arriving at the White Room about 30 minutes from now, and we'll be entering into Columbia's crew module about 10 minutes later. The, van, the astronaut van truck was parked a little closer to where the astronauts walk out, so they would not get as wet. It is raining here at Kennedy Space Center. Flight crew is now on their way to launch pad 39A. Our launch window for this morning is at 7.33 a.m. Extends to 9.33. Into the white room where uh, members of the white room closeout crew are already busy uh, awaiting their arrival. Uh, support astronaut uh, Bill Shepard already aboard the Orbiter Columbia configuring its switches for the astronaut's uh, ingress. Those switches, some of those switches uh, include ones that have been positioned by astronaut Shepard to prevent an inadvertent firing of the forward and aft reaction control system while the crew is climbing into the vehicle. Counting and the flight crew has entered the elevator and uh, should be uh, on their way up to the uh, white room shortly. They have arrived at the 195-foot level and are uh, crossing the orbiter access arm. And we've got uh, members of the 61C crew getting ready uh, in the white room now to make their fourth entry into the orbiter Columbia uh, over the uh, Entrance way to the hatch. We have uh, three uh, three X's and a shamrock. Uh, good luck. Commander uh, Hoop Gibson being assisted uh, getting into his uh, personal egress harness at this time. A uh, piece of equipment that provides a variety of uh, equipment to the crew and capabilities, including the. Uh, some of the support equipment for them to uh, escape the orbiter if is necessary. And also uh, pilot Bolin is uh, getting his egress harness on at this time. 
This uh, flight crew has uh, gone through this exercise three previous times on uh, launch countdowns, and uh, this is their fourth trip to the White Room on uh, on a morning when they're hoping to uh, lift off. Very busy in the White Room at this time, lots of activity. Uh, Hoot Gibson getting on his uh, Launch an entry helmet at this time. He became an astronaut in 1978 and uh, has flown more than 3,000 hours in some 35 types of civil and military aircraft. He holds a commercial pilot, multi-engine and instrument ratings, and has completed over 300 carrier landings. Uh, Commander Gibson was the pilot on Space Shuttle Mission 41B in 1984, and he's logged more than 191 hours in flight in space. Uh, Pilot Bolden is uh, making his first trip into space. Uh, he became a NASA astronaut in May of 1980. His NASA assignments have included systems development group work on tile repair, SRB launch overpressure uh, problems, launch debris prevention, and the shuttle auto land development. Commander Gibson and, Gibson and uh, Pilot Bolden uh, just about ready to enter the orbiter at this time. The, uh, the black cover is being placed over their face mask or to prevent those face masks from getting uh, scratched as they enter. Flight crew beginning to enter the orbiter at this time. Beneath uh, the sign that has three strikes and a good luck. It appears we're going to need a little bit of luck this morning with the weather conditions uh, such as they are. We do look good overseas. Uh, the primary concern will be uh, weather in the KSC area. Uh, we do have a, a, about two hours of uh, window uh, extending from our new T0 time of 733 to 933. And are very hopeful that during that period of time we will have uh, an opportunity for launch during uh, a period of favorable weather, or at least acceptable weather. A payload specialist, uh, Bill Nelson, being assisted with his uh, launch and entry helmet at this time. He and payload specialist uh, Bob Sinker of uh, RCA will be sitting down on the mid-deck. Nelson is uh, the United States Congressman representing 11th uh, District of Florida, the Space Coast area. And uh, he is a uh, chairman. He is chairman of the Space Science and Applications Subcommittee and a member of the Banking and Finance and Urban Affairs Committee. He'll be involved with a number of the experiments to be performed on this flight, uh, particularly those involving the blood experiments. Payload Specialist Robert Sinker, representing RCA, is a senior staff engineer at the RCA Astroelectronics Division, East Windsor, New Jersey. Much of his career has been devoted to design and development of communication satellites, including RCA SATCOMs 1 and 2, the GTE SpaceNet satellites, and the Advanced Series 4000 spacecraft. The first of these satellites, designated RCA SATCOM KU Band 1, will be deployed during Mission 61C. Mission Specialist Steve Hawley will be occupying the center seat uh, just behind the uh, pilot and commander serving uh, in the capacity of flight engineer. He'll be uh, providing a third set of eyes on the controls and assisting the commander and the pilot with their ascent checklist.
And members of the 61 State Flight Crew entering the orbiter quite quickly this morning. They've had uh, they've had plenty of practice. And everybody here at Kennedy Space Center hopeful that this will be the day that this vehicle lifts off. Got uh, mission specialist uh, George Pinky Nelson and Franklin Chang yet to board Orbiter Columbia. Pinky Nelson sitting up on a flight deck uh, along with uh, Commander Gibson, Pilot Bolin, and mission specialist Hawley. And uh, Franklin Chang Diaz uh, sitting down on the mid deck closest to the uh, orbiter hatch. They'll swap places on the trip back. Checks with the uh, personnel here in Fire Room 1 at the Launch Control Center. Chang Diaz about to make his first trip into space. He became a NASA astronaut in 1980. Shaking hands here with members of the uh, closeout crew for the fourth time uh, as they give him a, a best wishes and uh, so long. That white room crew will begin uh, removing the orbiter access platforms uh, and unnecessary equipment uh, along with the assistance of the uh, astronaut support person, Bill Shepard, shortly in preparation to close the crew hatch. T-minus one hour, ten minutes, and holding. We've uh, we've entered a unplanned uh, hold here at T-minus one hour and ten minutes. We'll be in this hold for approximately 30 minutes, and the reason for that, we're exercising an option to uh, ensure that we have the last 90 minutes uh, available of this launch window this morning. Uh, available to us without any worry about having to uh, go back and realign the orbiter's inertial measurement units. Those uh, IMUs are, of course, a critical part of uh, the orbiter's guidance system. We normally enter the uh, pre-flight alignment of the IMUs at about uh, T minus one hour and one minute. Uh, we would have been doing that only nine minutes from now uh, had we continued to count. That operation takes approximately 49 minutes to complete and is uh, normally finished during the T-minus 20-minute hold. Uh, once you uh, come out of the hold, the orbiter's computers are transitioned to what we call the Ops 101 mode, and that is the uh, terminal countdown configuration for those computers. Uh, after you have achieved that point, you have uh, 90 minutes uh, in which uh, you need to launch or if you have not, you need to uh, then go back and perform a realignment of the inertial measurement units, which again would take about another 49 minutes. To ensure that we have the last 90 minutes of our hold this morning available to us without any threat of having to, uh, to stop that uh, count and, and realign the IMUs, we have opted to hold at this point for 30 minutes. We'll come out of this hold with a... Uh, resumption of the countdown that would lead to uh, a T0 at 
discussion that's been going on in the firing room concerning weather centers on a major system that has been passing through uh, Central Florida region through most of the night, bringing us rain, light rain, and moderate rain to KSC. Uh, that rain that we had had earlier has mostly moved off to the northeast offshore, but uh, the weather forecasters at Cape Canaveral have been reporting to the launch managers here in the firing room uh, a new area of substantial uh, rain, and then including moderate to heavy rain in the uh, Orlando Avon Park area. It is at this time expected to be continuing on uh, on a northeasterly uh, course and impacting our area. Weather forecast looking uh, pessimistic for this morning. We uh, have retargeted our T0 for 8.03 with a window that extends to 9.33. Uh, been working under the assumption uh, all morning that our best opportunity will come towards the end of the window if uh, we have one at all. We would anticipate, based on the current forecast, that we're going to have some very low decks uh, affecting our RTLS uh, vi uh, visual uh, capabilities. Of 61C aboard Orbiter Columbia for the fourth time. This is Shuttle Launch Control. So Florida. Remain in an extended hold period at this time, uh, waiting uh, some uh, miracle with the weather. Uh, Columbia feeling a little bit under the weather this morning, ready to go for launch, but uh, unable to uh, get off the pad at this time uh, because the rain continues here at Kennedy Space Center. Uh, we've not been able to get our weather reconnaissance aircraft, the shuttle training aircraft, uh, up and uh, off the shuttle landing facility yet. Uh, Shuttle managers discussing the situation here have decided that we will hang in for uh, some time yet, uh, evaluating uh, whether there's any possibility for an improvement here. We do have until 9.33 uh, this morning. It's only 8.01 at this time. Uh, it's uh, a little bit more than 90 minutes uh, remaining, uh, during which time we could, uh, based on our launch window, uh, get this uh, mission off the ground. Very little additional. Very little additional to report at this time. Uh, vehicle is good at this time and uh, sitting on the pad, uh, awaiting a go for liftoff. And we don't know whether that go is going to come. Uh, no decision yet, uh, not to proceed this morning. But uh, again, the weather is not looking like it's going to improve. Uh, We've gotten to this point, however, with the crew aboard the ship and the uh, tank loaded, all systems basically ready to proceed on. So uh, we're going to stay here for a while and see if uh, if there's any improvement. T minus nine minutes and holding. This is shuttle launch control.
getting any better, but uh, we remain in this period uh, while that's under assessment. The uh, most current uh, uh, forecast, uh, actually the most current uh, conditions are we have about 600-foot uh, overcast, uh, very low level, and uh, rain and fog in the area. Uh, winds are not too bad, uh, just gusting up to about 15. Uh, there's some expectation that we may get uh, some higher level winds uh, a little bit higher than that. We're beginning to see a low develop uh, over uh, to the west of us and the potential for thunderstorms is reported to be increasing. Uh, Cape Weather just reported to Launch Director we did uh, see a strike about 30 miles to the west of us so uh, we are uh, potentially going to be uh, seeing some electrical activity in the weather system as it moves this way. We have a uh, little more than an hour and uh, 10 minutes remaining in our uh, available launch window. Uh, no signs at this point of an improvement in the weather condition. Nevertheless, Columbia sitting on the pad ready to go, the crew aboard, the uh, external tank uh, filled, and all systems uh, in a standby mode. Uh, we're at T-minus nine minutes in holding, uh, awaiting a decision on whether we can uh, have any chance of proceeding. This is Shuttle Launch Control. This is Shuttle Launch Control. Uh, KSC Launch Director Gene Thomas has informed the crew aboard Columbia and the launch team here at Kennedy Space Center that we have scrubbed for the day. Uh, the launch director saying there's no possibility for the weather to clear with our available window that extended till 9.33. Conditions are deteriorating. They're getting worse. He told the crew, again, uh, I'm going to have to say that we're sorry it happened this way. Uh, Commander Gibson reporting back to uh, Launch Director Thomas. Uh, looking out the window, we could see we weren't going to go anywhere today. Uh, launch has been scrubbed. 61C will have to be rescheduled for another try. Uh, when that rescheduling uh, will occur is uh, later today. We cannot say at this point uh, when we'll make our next attempt. The uh, NASA test director, the Lockheed test director, Jim Toe, and orbiter test conductor, Don Weinberg, now going through the procedures to instruct the launch team to back out of this attempt to launch Columbia today. Uh, weather conditions developed such that uh, uh, we had rapidly deteriorating conditions early this morning. There was no hope they were going to get any better. The latest uh, weather forecast came just about uh, five uh, minutes ago. 
uh, to the launch control center from Cape Weather. Uh, Cape Weather reported we had uh, 600 broken cloud cover, an overcast at 2,000 feet. Visibility was reported to be two miles. We had rain and fog in the area. And additionally, we had uh, what rapidly developed uh, just a short while ago as a, as a small low area in the Orlando vicinity moving to the east with lightning. This was the fourth attempt to launch uh, 61C. Our first try on December 19th was abruptly halted at T minus 14 seconds when our ground computer detected an apparent problem with one of the booster hydraulic power units. And we came back after the holidays targeting liftoff for January the 6th and got down to the T minus 31 second mark on that date when a uh, ground side liquid oxygen valve closed sluggishly and forced another hold at T minus 31 seconds. On that particular day, our launch window expired before we could recycle and get off another try. Then on Tuesday of this week, we had unacceptable weather conditions at our transatlantic abort sites, Dakar and Marone, and we decided to call it a day at T minus nine minutes. Uh, we were back here this morning shooting for a liftoff at 6.55. We delayed uh, our T0 to 7.33 and then once again to 8.03 hoping to take advantage of what we thought might be an improvement of the weather at the closing of the closing moments of the window or the latter portion of the window. Uh, that did not turn out to be the case, and once again we have scrubbed for weather at T-minus nine minutes. The uh, transatlantic abort sites, uh, ironically, were go today. Both sites were in a go configuration. We selected uh, Dakar, Senegal as the primary abort site. Uh, we were no-go here at Kennedy for uh, much of the last... Uh, a few hours, uh, indeed all of the last few hours, and it has rained uh, almost continuously since last night. Prediction is that should continue for some time. We'll continue with commentary here at the Launch Control Center until the flight crew of 61C uh, has uh, left the orbiter Columbia. Very little else to say. We've tried again this morning, and because of weather, could not get this mission off. We'll announce our rescheduled zero time at a later at a later point this morning. This is Shuttle Launch Control. Normal command channel exception is orbiter personnel remain OIS 212. LTD going 22. Go ahead, APD. Okay, step 85 complete. Uh, complete our recycle. The uh, launch pad is now up on the 195-foot level. <clears throat> They've arrived in the white room and are in the process now of uh, readying the white room so they can open up the uh, orbiter hatch and uh, get the crew out. process should just take a few minutes. They have to close a, uh, a seal and inflate uh, a, a seal around the orbiter uh, tile. And that seal uh, has okay, been inflated at this time. Okay, we're in here. We're going to let the boys out. Yeah, we're going to do. Okay, thank you. Pad leader reporting to the uh, orbiter test conductor, Don Weinberg. They're going to open up the uh, hatch and let the boys out. Technicians uh, in the process of orbiting up the crew uh, hatch at this time. Tight, but did offer some promise of at least an opportunity or a chance for a, a hole in the clouds. Uh, weather conditions deteriorated rapidly this morning. Go ahead, 
the hatch to Columbia has been opened, and we should uh, we should see crew members beginning to emerge. Uh, the hatch is open. Our system is safe. We'd like to be relieved from station at this time. Okay, copy. Here we go on that. Thank you, sir. The access platforms uh, being installed to permit the crew to get out. Columbia's crew about to exit uh, the ship for the fourth time following a scrub.